Hey guys, Modeling Weekly here. In today's video, I'll finally be doing another build for you guys. It's been a while since the last one, so this is definitely deserved. It will, however, be a bit different to my usual format. Having lived in university halls for two months now, my airbrush has been pretty much out of action, so this gave me an idea. Why not have a crack at Model Minutes Starter Set Challenge, making use of only the box contents and a craft knife? This seemed like the perfect solution to me, so let's get into the video and see how it plays out. Enjoy! As you can hopefully tell by now, I selected Airfix's F35B as the candidate for this challenge, as it's essentially one big grey lump, so what could go wrong? Upon opening the box, you're met with the plastic parts all in one bag, a couple of humbrol brushes, the decals and instructions, and then finally the infamous humbrol paints. Taking a closer look at the parts, they don't look too bad, however you can instantly tell that the design of this kit has been heavily simplified to suit the absolute beginner. Whilst this is a good design philosophy for a starter kit, you are going to want to look elsewhere if you're planning on making a super detailed lightning. One thing that did disappoint me however was the overall quality control. There were multiple areas where scratches in the plastic were visible, and most notably there was a pretty nasty crack in the lower half of the fuselage. Not the best look I have to say. Despite this, it could definitely be a lot worse and it seems pretty perfect for someone just starting out in the hobby. The only clear part included in the kit is this canopy piece, and whilst it's crystal clear for the most part, there is a small blemish on the top which is a little bit disappointing, though it's not too noticeable so I wasn't massively bothered. The decals, which are of course printed by Cartograph, look perfect to me so no complaints here. These should go down really nicely. The brushes included with this kit are pretty decent at first glance. There are Humbrol size 4 and size 0, which gives you a pretty decent range in the sorts of things you can do with them. Super fine detail painting is going to be a little bit tricky, but it's nothing some brush modification can't handle. The poly cement is then provided in a standard mini foil tube. Now for the moment of truth, the paint. The six pots included with this kit were a pretty mixed bag. As you can see, the gunmetal shade was probably the worst, having glooped up quite a bit. The white, black and greys were all okay, and whilst they could be better, at least I didn't have to deal with rock solid paints. The colours included were gunmetal, black, white, two pots of 164 grey, and then a slightly lighter shade of grey. Before we crack on with the build, I'm going to quickly go over the rules for this challenge. They're pretty much the same rules that Matt from Model Minutes set out in his video, However, I've tweaked mine a little bit to give myself a little bit of flexibility. Let me know in the comments if you think these rules are valid. Rule number one, no third party products, including varnishes, primers, paints, glues, and the list goes on. Only the paints and glue provided in this kit can be used. Rule number two, use as many parts as possible, so no raised landing gear for me. Rule number three, the use of a craft knife with one basic handle and blade is permitted, along with water and a maximum of three very basic household items to aid in the model's construction. I selected these as a cotton bud, toothpick and a small piece of blue tack. The craft knife and water are pretty much essential, so I'm sure you can agree that their inclusion is justified. The three household items might stir it up a bit for some of you, however my justification for these items is that they're more for quality of life than anything else, and the fact they're readily available to anyone regardless of skill level. With all of that sorted, let's wash the parts in warm soapy water and then begin the build. The first task involved a bit of clean up and joining, concerning the connection between the lower fuselage half and the nose cone. Both parts were prepared with the craft knife, and then the glue was applied using a piece of the kit's box itself in order to achieve a more accurate application. The fit was pretty good. The three interior bulkheads could then be slotted into place, adding a bit of extra rigidity to the model. It was now straight onto a bit of painting. Before the two fuselage halves went together, 
I wanted to make sure that all the interior areas were sorted, making my life easier further down the line. The air intakes were first painted with the white, which really didn't adhere to the surface very well at all, even after applying multiple thin down coats. I did manage to achieve a somewhat acceptable finish however, so I just left it at that. I then painted the bulkhead behind the intakes with black in an attempt to make them look deeper than they actually are. This was again thinned down to minimise the effect of brush strokes. The same black could then be used to give the cockpit a once over, which was really a twice over as it actually required two coats. This would provide a nice base layer for some shading with the grey paints later on. It's also worth mentioning that so far I've exclusively used the size zero brush as it's provided me with much, much more control in these confined spaces. As you can see here on the seat, the water down paint really doesn't like sticking to the surface at all. Humbrol 164 Dark Grey was then used to pick out the pilot's seat cushion, providing some visual separation on this component. With the seat cushions painted, the lighter shade of grey included in the kit was used to pick out some highlights on the seat, adding a bit of extra interest. Having slotted the seat nicely into place, I could get onto that modulation I was talking about. The first step in my master plan was to pick out some of the boxes and panels in the cockpit with a dark grey glaze, which could then be built upon with further layers. I tried to apply this as evenly as possible, although it was tricky. Next, the light grey was used to add some highlights, which were sort of semi-dry brushed onto the raised surfaces in the cockpit. For anyone not familiar with dry brushing, it simply means you remove the majority of the paint from the brush on a napkin and then lightly dust the brush over the surface so that only the peaks and edges receive paint. It's a great way of adding some extra contrast. Now for the instrument panel decal, which was removed from the decal sheet using my craft knife. It really felt weird applying a decal to a surface with no varnish over the top, however having held it in warm water for 20 seconds it slipped right into place. Using unthinned white paint along with the size 0 brush, I then picked out a few details and controls along the walls of the cockpit. I think this really helped to make it pop and to add some extra much needed interest. There's still something missing though, uh, that's it, seat belts. In order to imitate these, I first cut out some very thin strips of paper from the instruction booklet and trimmed them down to the sizes required. Then, in place of an adhesive, I applied some thick dark grey paint to the areas of the seat where the belts would touch. The belts were then placed on these areas and sealed into place with another coat of the same paint over the top. This was then left to fully dry. I then carefully painted the seat belts, this time with the correct black shade, until I was happy with the extent to which they were picked out. With the cockpit finally complete, I joined the fuselage halves together. I made sure to use plenty of glue here, for a reason that will become obvious very soon. At this stage, I also added the two vertical stabilizers at the rear. So here's why I added all of that glue. As I squeezed the two halves together, a small amount of molten gooey plastic was squeezed outwards around the seam line, 
which then hardened and acted as a sort of filler. This could then be cleaned up beautifully with my craft knife, as shown in the video. Before we get into the final assembly stages, I'd just like to say a massive thanks to all of my Modeling Weekly channel members here on YouTube. Your support is absolutely invaluable and allows me to continue making content for you guys. If you'd like to find out more about what being a channel member entails, feel free to hit that join button down below for more info. Anyway, back to the video. At this stage, I assembled the jet nozzle that would be painted and cleaned up later on, along with the landing gear legs which were glued straight into the fuselage at this relatively early stage in the build. The reason for this was to provide some points at which I could hold the model during painting, without adding unwanted fingerprint marks to the paint job. Now for some proper painting. In order to minimise brush strokes as much as possible, the main grey tone on this model was painted in multiple thin coats, along with the larger size 4 brush included with the kit. Before applying the majority of the paint however, I made sure to achieve as sharp of a transition as possible around the air intakes, which I previously painted with white in the beginning. Masking tape would of course have been ideal in these places, however that's not in the spirit of the challenge. Painting by hand would have to suffice. I then began working on blocking in the rest of the grey. Throughout this process, I did my best to keep the brush strokes all in one direction, providing a much smoother end result. I also used the side of the brush a lot more than not, as not only did this provide me with better coverage, but it also further decreases the chance of bristle streaks being left behind in the paint. This first layer looks pretty patchy, but it'll get nicer with further coats. As you can see, the colour is building up a lot nicer with these second and third coats, and once it's all dry we should, in theory, be left with a nice, relatively smooth surface. With the grey complete, I moved on to adding the white elements such as the fan used for the aircraft's stovel capabilities. You can see in these shots that the grey turned out pretty alright, however in some areas it looks a little bit patchy due to the different layers showing up past each other and reflecting the light differently. This was slightly irritating as it makes it look uneven, but I can assure you it's perfectly smooth. I then moved on to painting the aircraft's ram tape, which was, in my opinion, one of the most important steps in the build. It did the job of breaking up the monotonous grey undercoat, adding a lot of new visual interest to the model. For this purpose, I used the size 0 brush, along with the lighter grey shade, ever so slightly thinned with water so as to maximise coverage. So here's the result. In my opinion, it really makes all the difference. It was a very tedious process, however definitely worth it in the long run. Time to paint up a few other parts now. I began by black basing the jet exhaust I assembled earlier, serving as a pretty decent primer for the gunmetal shade that I would soon apply. I made sure the black had dried completely before continuing onwards, as to prevent any reactivation with the gunmetal. The gunmetal itself was pretty nasty if I'm being honest, but my hopes were pretty low to begin with, as acrylic metallic paints are never amazing. 
it didn't really shine very much. However, it did provide enough of a contrast against the dark grey fuselage of the plane itself to be somewhat acceptable. Now for the tyres. For these, I used a mix of dark grey and black, creating a shade that matched that of rubber as closely as possible. If you're building this kit yourself, make sure you use a dark grey shade like this rather than black, as black will contrast far too much. Let's now take a look at the decal application stage. There weren't many of them in total, so this wasn't a long process, which I'm kind of glad about as it was pretty nerve-wracking applying decals straight onto unprotected acrylic paint. Before application, I made sure all the decals were fully soaked and sliding around using pretty warm water, and then when it came to actually applying them, I used the tip of my craft knife to help locate them on the surface. It's also worth mentioning that, after they have been left to sit for a few minutes, a dry cotton bud can be used to help compress them into any surface details required, as you can see in the video. It was at this point that I decided the model was a bit bare, so I mixed up a highly diluted mix of black paint and applied this to any details that required a little bit of spicing up. Most predominantly, the wheel wells and other white features. Any excess wash was simply removed with water on a brush or a paper towel, however this has to be done soon after application as acrylic washes dry very quickly. The additional parts and hatches, which were painted off camera with the exact same methods as before, could now be fixed into place with a dab of poly cement. The model really started to come together at this point and it actually doesn't look too bad considering the parameters in place. Now for the final step, which is of course the canopy. Whilst this may seem a bit of a challenge to begin with, it was actually pretty smooth sailing. I simply made use of the size zero brush, along with the lighter grey shade from earlier, to frame the canopy glass using the moulded rim as a guide. This required a few layers before a nice thickness was built up, as I was using thinned paint. However, the F35's canopy only features a rim and a single strut, so this process didn't take long at all. Now for my little trick. A lot of you probably saw this coming, however I'll explain for those who didn't. Any colour that went over the edge of the struts during the painting stage can simply be scratched off with the pointed end of a cocktail stick, producing a very nice and sharp result despite the lack of canopy masks. Just make sure you pull off this step once the paint has fully dried, otherwise you won't achieve the same sharp effect. Applying the glue exclusively to the tab at the back of the canopy to prevent frosting, it could now be slid into place, calling the build complete. So here's my take on the starter set challenge. It was honestly a lot more fun than I was expecting, and I really got into it during those painting stages, with a bit of music playing in the background. Overall, I'm pretty happy with how I've performed on it, despite the slightly patchy appearance on the main grey shade from some angles. Just don't look too closely. It was interesting to see how far the limited tools and consumables could be pushed, and it was definitely a rigorous test of my skills as a modeler. I'd highly recommend having a crack at this challenge if you do get the chance. Looking at the kit from the perspective of a beginner, you can definitely tell it's well thought out. 
Despite the various quality control glitches, the design is good and intuitive, and the fast building process with minimalistic parts means that you end up with a completed model pretty quickly, which will almost certainly help in keeping newcomers hooked. Let me know what you think of the model, as well as my build, in the comments below. I'd be interested in hearing your thoughts. That's it from me today, so another huge thanks goes out to all of my Modeling Weekly channel members, as well as all of you for watching this far. I really hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you stay tuned if you enjoyed it, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Bye.